is Stephen from Owner Disso. And today we are looking at the uh, Lenovo Yoga 720. It's a 15.6 inch two in one that can be used in uh, laptop mode, tent mode, and also tablet mode with the optional Wacom AES pen. You can buy a 13 inch model with Intel graphics, or you can buy a 15 inch uh, models starting at $1,000 and with a full HD display, eight gigabytes of RAM and Intel graphics, all the way up to a one terabyte SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, and dedicated GTX 1050 graphics and a 4K IPS display. Now all the 15 inch models have an i7-700HQ quad core eight thread CPU and my model costs about $1,200 from Best Buy. So what competition do we have in this space? Well, for two and ones we have the HP Spectre 360. Now this costs an extra $600, uh, but only has a two core i7-7500 uh, CPU, which is clocked 100 megahertz less than the Yoga. You see, this is where Intel's naming scheme gets confusing in my opinion. Just because it is an i7, it does not mean it is a quad core. The Spectre does have discrete graphics, however, but it's in the form of the 940MX. Now, this is a budget GPU and performs less than the 1050 on the Yoga. Like the Yoga, however, it does support uh, pen. The Surface Book has always been a favorite of mine. It's uh, 13 and a half inches, it's light, it's portable. The new model has a 965M GPU, but it only has an i7-6600U last generation CPU. It's two cores and it costs $1,400 more than the Yoga. Now, many would compare the Yoga 720 with the Dell XPS 15, as they both can be configured with a 4K display, a GTX 1050, um, but the uh, Dell has four gigabytes of VRAM, while this only has uh, two gigabytes. And this will limit the ability to play with souped up graphics or possibly 4K. But to be fair, the 1050 is not fast enough for 4K gameplay anyway. Here's actually my Yoga trying to play Rise of the Tomb Raider in 4K with the lowest settings, and it uh, fails to load, uh, load up pro probably because of the uh, lack of uh, VRAM. The Express 15, however, is not a two-in-one. It can't use it in tablet, and it does not have uh, pen support. Thus, the Yoga 720 is in a unique position. It's a two-in-one, 15-inch, quad-core, discrete graphics, and has pen support. So let's take a quick look at how the CPUs and the graphics compare between all of those models. The i7-700 uh, HQ CPU in the XPS 15 and the Yoga 720 it's 50% faster than the HP Spectre 360, which in turn performs about the same as the Surface Book. So looking at the graphics, the GTX 1050 in the XPS 15 and the Yoga 720 is 17% faster than the more expensive Surface Book and 187% faster than the HP Spectre 360. The build quality is superb. It is uh, made from solid uh, aluminum, uh, the edge has a nice uh, polished uh, bevel to it. Now, there's one thing I would like to point out that I don't think the anodized aluminum here is, uh, is strong enough. Perhaps the anodic layer is not deep enough. Um, but I do find that I've got some scratches uh, just here. Um, no doubt from when doing tablet mode and it scrapes along, which my table, it's a plastic table. So that's something to be careful of and, uh, you know, um, so that is a shame. It this, uh, measures 14 inches long, nine and a half inches wide, and three quarter inches thick. And on the right hand side, we have a power button, a USB 3.1 Type C with Thunderbolt 3 support. Now, unfortunately, I understand that it only has two PCI Express lanes instead of uh, the four. So I'm not sure how it will perform um, when connected to an external graphics dock. But attaching a 4K external display at 60 Hertz should be no problem. We, have, we then have a USB 3.0 port, and then turning at the back, we have a nice large air vent for, for the heat exhaust. And this is good. It does not get blocked um, when the lid uh, opens and closes like the uh, Razer Blade 14. On the left hand side, we have a rectangular power port, which is great because it can be plugged in either way. We have a USB 3.0 port, which can also power devices when it is turned off. We have a combo headphone microphone jack and a separate inbuilt mic. The model I have is uh, as a 4K panel. It's, it's not G-Sync but it, and it's clocked at 60 hertz, but it's very, very nice. 4K photos and, uh, and videos are sharp and they're crisp. In fact, here is a side-by-side -side comparison um, against my uh, TN panel, Full HD GT73 VR. Now, this photo may not do it justice, but let me tell you, the image on the Yoga shows much more detail. Color accuracy is uh, very good as well. So we've got 96% of sRGB, 
74% of Adobe RGB and 71% of NTSC. The panel is made by BOE and the model ID is BOE06F4. Now it is a touch screen and it uh, supports uh, 10 point uh, multi-touch. Like the Dell XPS 15, it has uh, very thin bezels uh, to maximize your viewing area. Now there is a 720p webcam at the top and this is what it looks and sounds like. So a 720p webcam, this is what it sounds and looks like. The screen does have a bit of, uh, bit of wobble when you touch it, um, but the, the hinges are stiff and it's not possible to open it uh, with, with one hand. It has a minimal light bleed, just, there's just a little bit perhaps in the top right hand corner. And uh, at full brightness, the display has good viewing angles um, indoors, but um, under direct light, it is a completely different story. The reflections are making it very hard to, to use. Now, if you are planning to use this uh, in tablet mode um, uh, outside, the reflections and the weight of 4.9 pounds uh, makes it very awkward. Now, reducing the brightness uh, makes it hard to see, and uh, the, the brightness is actually not linear. 100% brightness is 217 lux, 75% uh, 92 lux, 50% uh, is uh, 32 lux, and 25% is only uh, 10 lux. In comparison, the Razor Blade 14 has 287, Aorus X3 V7 has 253, but it's still brighter than the equally specced Sager NP5855 TN panel that had a poor 181 lux. I think Lenovo actually do this to uh, increase the battery life. Now, 40% brightness, I would say, is the bare minimum, and actually it is really perhaps a bit too low. But I did use this brightness uh, and power saver and battery saver mode to test the, the battery life. Now, the Yoga 720 has a sizable 72 watt hour battery, um, but uh, how much uh, does the, this is 4K panel affect it? Now, streaming YouTube, till it, the battery dropped down to 7%, we get seven hours, 10 minutes, which I think personally is fantastic. And it actually only takes 25 minutes to recharge the 33% by 33%. Now, Lenovo does have its own battery management software. Conservation mode is ideal if you uh, leave your laptop plugged in uh, most of the time because it maximizes the charging at 60%. This actually will improve the lifespan uh, of your battery. There is also a battery stretch option, but using this setting actually didn't really improve the battery life uh, over what I achieved uh, previously. Now, my model has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. The spec sheet actually says it's 2,133 megahertz, but in reality, it's 2,400 megahertz, and it's made by Hynix. One 8 gig is uh, upgradable. The second stick actually is under the motherboard. We have a 512 gigabyte SSD from Samsung. It is a PCI Express NVMe M.2 drive, and it has fantastic speeds. One and a half gigabytes per second write, and three gigabytes per second read. This translates into very fast uh, boot up times of about 11 seconds. Uh, the aluminum back cover can be removed using uh, using a Torque 5 screwdriver. But then you actually notice there's a dust cover um, over the intake uh, vent, which I think is a very nice touch. Looking inside, you will see that there are two shared heat pipes between the GTX 1050 uh, two gigabyte GPU and the i7 700 HQ CPU. In a later video, I, I will actually show disassembling it and replacing the CPU with uh, liquid metal. So as I mentioned, this model comes with an i7 700 HQ CPU, but taking a look at the spec sheet from Lenovo, you can see uh, that they have, a, have it clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. There's actually no mention of turbo boost on the i7, and indeed you can see that. It is indeed clocked at 2.8 gigahertz, and it does not boost up when under load. Running Cinebench R15, we score 591 points, and the CPU temperature is nice at 72 degrees. As you can see, according to uh, throttle stop, um, the, the disabled turbo is checked. Not nice, Lenovo. Many people actually will miss this on the, on the spec sheet, that it doesn't show the, the turbo boost of 3.8 gigahertz. So, it's a Lenovo hobble performance, but why? To reduce temperatures. Let's see what we get uh, when we uh, re-enable turbo boost. We actually actually score less with 543 points. And this is because the CPU temperature skyrockets to 96 degrees and it throttles. So let's undervolt it um, using throttle stop to uh, 100 uh, by 125 millivolts. Wow, what a surprise. We score 723 points, which is now in line with what the CPU should score, and the temperature is at 76 degrees. So why didn't Lenovo apply this uh, undervolt as default? Well, I think the answer lies in gaming. So looking at time, spare, time spy, we get 1,730 points at stock, 
and slightly better performance when the CPU is allowed to boost. But look at those CPU temperatures. With Turbo Boost enabled, uh, without Undervolt, we get 99 degrees. Even with the Undervolt, we get 88 degrees, which is seven uh, degrees higher than the non-Turbo Boost setting. Certainly undervolting helps, but uh, since the GPU and CPU share the same heat pipes, the CPU gets hotter due to the GPU uh, workload. It is worth noting that uh, the identically equipped Sager NP5855 beats the Yoga quite handily here. Let's look at uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, ultra settings. We see no benefit from uh, the CPU when it is allowed to uh, turbo boost. Even a 2.8 GHz CPU is more than capable of feeding the GTX 1050 at, uh, at these settings. We get about 32 FPS. Interestingly, the Sager again uh, beats the uh, Diogo 720. As for the temperatures, at stock, we are fine. 82 degrees uh, on the CPU and 74 on the GPU. Activating Turbo Boost with no undervolt saw the CPU skyrocket to 99 degrees. Undervolting brought it down, uh, but it was still at 90 degrees. But hold on, there is a balanced and performance setting in the BIOS. Would switching uh, to balance mode uh, help with temperatures? Well, yes, it does. A 10% drop on the CPU and a 20% drop on the GPU. Ha <laughs> ha! But there's a catch. Look at the frame rate. Performance mode is 78% faster. I wouldn't advise balance mode if you were gaming. Medium settings at 1680 by 1080 may be the best settings to use in this game. We get 49 FPS. Okay, so let's look at Rainbow Six Siege. Again, Turbo Boost doesn't help in gaming. We see about 23 FPS at max settings. The Sager NP5855 got the same result. Again, stock temperatures were fine. The CPU at 77 degrees and the GPU at 67. Activating Turbo Boost saw a 10 degree increase in CPU temperatures with no undervolt. Undervolting knocked off, 60, uh, knocked off 6 degrees, so it's definitely worthwhile doing that. For this game, playing at 1080p, it is worthwhile dropping quality settings down to very high. You get a good uh, 67 frames per second. So our final game is Battlefield 1. So we don't see much uh, difference with the, uh, the same spec uh, Sager NP5855, uh, but what is immediately noticeable is the throttling that occurs uh, when Turbo Boost is enabled and there's no undervolt applied. A CPU temperature of 99 degrees results in a 20% reduction in performance um, due to uh, throttling. I do think you are better uh, off actually sticking at stock clocks and applying an undervolt uh, for gaming. Just so you can see the benefit of enabling Turbo Boost uh, for CPU intensive task tasks, let's have a look at my uh, handbrake test. I convert a four gigabyte uh, file to MP4 and measure the time taken. Here are the results. At stock, it took 50 minutes, 35 seconds. But activating Turbo Boost and undervolting saved off six minutes. I think that is amazing and it's definitely worthwhile. So why does it get so hot when the CPU is restored to its correct frequency? I believe this is mainly down to the low fan speeds. I did try a number of programs to check the fan speeds and could not find out what they were. Uh, but typically, fan speed is proportional to the noise they, uh, they make, so let's take a look at that. At idle, we are at uh, a whisper quiet 18 decibels. At load, firing up city bench in heaven to stress both the CPU and the GPU, we max out at 37 decibels. That is quiet. In fact, I'd say that is the quietest I have ever, ever heard. So the fans are, are great at keeping the wife happy, but not so good for cooling. All right. So if, uh, if, it's not, uh, if the hot air is not being blown out of the chassis, what are the chassis temperatures like? Center of the keyboard is 41 degrees. The AWSD keys are 35 degrees. The right hand side of the keyboard is 37. The trackpad is cool at 27 degrees. The rear over the heat sinks are 40 degrees. Now that's looking underneath the underneath um, front, 34 degrees and at the back, oh boy, 50 degrees and in my opinion, that is a bit too warm for your lap. So I definitely don't recommend you wearing shorts. Anyway, one good thing about the quiet fans is that they won't uh, drown out the, your speakers. The Yoga 720 has two speakers made by JBL, and I think they are two watt each, and they perform very well. They're fairly loud, clear, and they do not sound tinny. In my test, they produce 77 decibels. <laughs> The two front speakers are underneath, um, but when you close it up into tablet mode, there's a nice little gap there so the sound doesn't get muffled. I like that. 
the keyboard is recessed so the keys don't actually touch the screen uh, when it's um, you know, it's deactivated. And the, the keys are deactivated as is the touchpad when you're in tablet mode. There's some degree of uh, flex, but the keys have nice spacing around them and they don't feel too mushy. I do like how the volume keys have uh, a single press, so there's no uh, pressing the uh, FN key uh, to, uh, to change the volume or to, to mute it. Backlighting is, is white. Uh, there are two levels of brightness and the trackpad is uh, spacious and it seems to have uh, a, a, like a glass surface and it uses uh, Windows Precision drivers as accurate. The mouse buttons are inbuilt and uh, they work very well. Two finger scrolling and side swiping works well. Pincer zoom, perhaps not so much, but you can actually use the, the touch screen for that. So it's not a big deal. One thing I really like is the fingerprint reader to log in instead of using the Windows Hello camera. Love it. So let's take a look at the pen and its performance. It uses a Wacom AES technology and I bought a Lenovo Active Pen and is able to do 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now honestly, I don't know if you can tell the difference between that and 2048 levels, but then again, I'm not an artist, I'm a note taker. It does come with uh, spare nibs and a USB pen holder. And uh, I use uh, OneNote a lot and it writes right up to the edge and, uh, and it, when drawing, it does tend to keep up uh, with your, uh, your fast strokes, so that is nice. And you can do lighter and darker pen strokes as well. The pen, the pen does have two buttons on it, one for left click and uh, one for right click, and it has good uh, palm uh, rejection, so there's actually no in, uh, accidental scribbles resting your hand on the screen. Sensitivity is also good. You can see the dot on the screen a good centimeter away from the screen. The pen does take one battery uh, to, to power it. So let's take a quick look at the software. I was pleased that the initial setup, it, looked, uh, it allowed you to pick what bloatware you wanted. It does come uh, with Lenovo Companion, which uh, lets you uh, check uh, for updates. You can uh, scan and, uh, and check your hardware health. Lenovo settings uh, let you uh, put a battery percentage indicator in your system tray and uh, let you alter settings for keyboard, backlight, touchpad, camera and uh, Dolby Audio. Now the Dolby Atmos program allows you to pick various uh, scenarios such as uh, music or gaming, uh, but to be honest, I couldn't tell much of a difference. Okay, so let's, uh, let's sum up. There's a lot to like about uh, the Yoga 720. It's build quality, it's top notch, it's solid aluminum, there's no gaps and there's no creaks. The screen at full brightness is great. I can see why people jump to 4K IPS, but does it add anything to gaming? Not on this model, as the GTX 1050 is not powerful enough. But watching 4K movies and photos, it is very nice. Touch accuracy is uh, very good and responsive. Uh, the speakers are good. Also, uh, the battery life is great. You should be able to uh, get nearly a full day uh, of work out of it, uh, depending on what brightness settings you, you apply. Um, but at least you know that it can uh, charge up pretty quickly. The pen works well, although it is, uh, it, uh, it is too heavy here to use in, uh, in tablet mode. You know, if you're out in the field, I think you'd be better off uh, with something, uh, something else because the, the, the screen is uh, too reflective and it's, it's a bit too heavy. Um, but the, the fan noise uh, is low, so it's great for an office uh, environment. And let's not forget that this baby can also game. 1080p gaming at uh, medium to high settings is uh, certainly very possible. I would personally create two profiles in Throttle Stop, both undervolted, say to 147 millivolts, one with the Turbo Boost disabled for gaming and one with Turbo Boost enabled for uh, everything else. Hope you liked my re uh, review and uh, thumbs up if you did. Uh, remember to hit the, the subscribe button uh, so you can see some more and uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.